Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting and today in this short video I am pumped, I'm excited because we're here in the studio, we've got a laser set up, we've got LED walls, lighting fixtures, and we're going to talk about and show you on a practical basis how in the world to make all this stuff look good on camera at the same time. Because if you've ever sat down and tried to make LED walls and lasers look good, you probably get where, you know, your wall starts getting all squarey and you start to see what's called the Moyar effect. You can see it a little bit right now in this shot where there's kind of some lines. It's not terrible, but it's there. We're going to fix it in a minute. Um, so you're, you're going to get stuff called like the Moyar effect, which doesn't look good and it's distracting on LED walls. On lasers, instead of looking nice and solid like this, you're going to see it flickering constantly. Um, and, you know, you just want to make it look right, right? So in this video, we're going to talk about exactly that, some of the common things you can see, and how to get rid of them with uh, your camera settings and your lighting and your video all together. Let's dive in. The crux of today, the basic thing is like we're going to look at some of those common problems and solve them. On our way to that, I've got these here to help me focus the camera as I do so. Um, these are our gaff tapes, grade A gaff tape, and we uh, were able to brand it as our own, but it's the same that we introduced in some recent videos, and this stuff is awesome. I just got to say, if you haven't checked it out, check out the link below or just go to gradeagaffetape.com. It'll take you right to the site because this stuff is like, you know, just as good functionally as the name brand stuff but 40 to 50 percent off so you can't lose with that go try a roll today and if you use enough tape that you buy in cases it's probably going to make sense to switch to grade a and we would love to help you with that let's talk first about led walls because i think that's the one that most people have issues with uh, but then we'll talk about lasers and how in the world i got both to look good in this shot so LED walls, really in lasers, there's there's kind of one big thing that makes them look bad uh, at the same time. <laughs> and that is what are called CMOS sensors in cameras. Now, most video cameras use a CMOS sensor. Some use what's called a global shutter, where it takes the entire frame of video at once, but most are scrolling through the pixels over time. And this can cause some issues. That's what's going to cause your lasers to flicker. And it's going to cause your LED walls. Actually, I've got my creation LED wall over here on the side. And I have gone ahead and gotten some frame rate mismatch to go on there. So you can see here at the bottom, I'm about here. You see there's a line across the wall here. And then, of course, as I'm running this in autofocus on this camera and it focuses on me, we get some Maior effect, okay? That's bad. We don't like that, right? We don't... What we see here, basically, is we see our CMOS sensor scrolling through and the frame rate's not so bad that the wall's flickering or anything or so off, but what it's doing is the frames are out of sync. Now... If your cameras support Genlock and you have a video processor that does as well too, then hook them up together with Genlock and that's going to get those frames in sync. That's going to get rid of that. In my case here, we, we don't have Genlock. We're using some micro four thirds cameras. Um, they're not that fancy. Uh, but what I could do is adjust my shutter speed and get rid of it. Let's do that. And so as you can see, I'm staring at the monitor. I believe I got rid of it completely or maybe I moved it around a little. Either way, great indication, just adjusting your shutter speed a little bit, then re-exposing your ISO to make it look great, and you often can get rid of any banding or anything like that in your wall. Okay, what else do we run into with LED walls? Well, let me come back over here. Uh, the other thing we run into is that Moyar effect, okay? And the best way to show this is if I pop to my camera and start working with the focus. So my R effect is all about focus, okay? When you get the individual pixels in focus with the camera, it creates that effect. Let me do a quick demonstration just with the manual focus here on the camera. Okay, so I'm running the manual focus here, and I'll run it till it's focusing on the wall exactly. You see that? And then I go past it, it goes away. All right, 
And so you can see there, and I see a lot worse on other walls, but this is our DVS Optic 2 uh, 2.9 wall here in the studio. It is an awesome wall, um, and it doesn't show the Moyar as bad as a lot of other walls because it's designed and engineered to look good on camera. But I can still create it if I focus on the wall exactly. You see, I'm right against the wall. I'm in focus, the wall's in focus perfectly. We see all of that striping across the wall here and now I feel like a weatherman, okay? So I'll go back and adjust my focus back out. You can see now, I'm in focus. Now I can't, you're not gonna be able to focus on something super close to a wall, typically, um, but the finer the pixel pitch you get, the closer you're able to focus on an object to the wall. But if I get out here, I get the sunlight on my shirt. I'm in focus, I believe, looking at the monitor. The wall looks great. We've gotten rid of that Moyar effect. Those are really the two main things that uh, plague LED walls. If you're having frame rate issues, I mean, the best thing to do if you're choosing cameras is to go with global shutter cameras. For example, we've been looking at going with a Blackmagic, uh, one of their studio line cameras here. Maybe we'll do that. It will make it easier to get the wall frame rate synced up to get it looking right on camera. But at the same time, you know, with the cameras that I have, it still totally works. You can still do it. Um, it just takes a little bit more finessing, a little bit more messing with. Now, let's take a quick look at our laser. So our laser's on, it's moving, it looks really great. If I hop over here to the camera, however, I can make it flicker real quick just by adjusting the frame rate. So here, that's the difference between 1 60th of a second and 1 50th, 1 40th, 1 30th, 1 25th. So what you're going to find is the, the rate of the laser, I can just keep going up with my frame rate, and it just keeps getting worse and worse, right? Um, so what you're going to find is there's always going to be a sweet spot between your camera and your lasers or your LED walls. There's always going to be that place where they look really good together. Okay, so what did we learn here and how does this apply to your cameras? I'm going to stand here so I'm more in focus. You know, number one thing is get those cameras to make your LED walls look good. You really do want to go and get your camera settings right in the first place. Okay, some of the things we hadn't talked about yet until this point is... Getting your LED wall and your main front light source close in color temperature or the same. That's going to make it look the best. It's not, it's not one of those things you have to, have to, have to do, but it really does improve the look. Okay, You're always balancing when you're lighting for the camera the difference between the eye and the camera. right? So if you have a warm white front wash and you dial your color temperature and your LED processor down, uh, it might start to look orange to the eye. Maybe you don't want to go quite that far, but you kind of meet in the middle, right? You bring your processor color temp down a little. If you can bring your front light te color temperature up a little bit from like 3000K to like, you know, 3300, you bring your wall down to like 3800, it's going to look pretty good on camera. Your whites, your colors are going to look true, and they're also going to look good to the eye. So color temp, very important, uh, being consistent between all of the types of sources on stage. So backlight when it's in white, front light, LED wall anything that's emitting light, get them in a same or as close color temperature as reasonably looks good. Again, balancing between what looks good to the eye for the people in the room, or in this case, there's nobody in the room, so we're only thinking about the camera, right? Um, number two, okay, manual everything, okay, manual everything. Set all of your camera settings to manual. Learn how to use your camera really well, because you'll find one, Moyar effect, right? Um, you know, I said there's the distance between you and the LED wall. That affects whether you're being, f you're focusing on the wall and, and the, the object or the person on stage or just focusing on the person or object. The other thing that's going to affect that is your aperture, your f-stop, your depth of field from your camera, right? If it's softer and you have a tighter space where your focus is sharp, then you're going to be able to get closer to that LED wall. Set that focus in manual, okay? Setting cameras in autofocus will always fail you. Um, yes, it's easier, but it's going to try to focus on the wall. It's going to get those pixels in focus. You're going to see the Moyar effect in full display every time, okay? Yes, it's more work, but it's totally worth it. Exposure. It's got to be manual, okay? The first thing you want to do 
is balance the brightness level of your front light to a brightness on your LED wall that looks good. When you're buying an LED wall, as I've said so many times before, you want to get the lowest brightness you can. If somebody's selling you something that's significantly over a thousand nits for an indoor LED wall, it's probably not the one you want. Okay, you typically want to be under a thousand nits. You'll be dialing that back anyways. Um, but if you have an LED wall that's super bright, you're just going to dial it down to like 2% and you're going to start to lose color resolution. Um, granted, the newer Novastar processors do have the ability, I believe, to turn down the brightness of the image coming into the processor, leaving more color resolution, but that's topic for another day. Okay, uh, but you want to be manual because whenever you're sh shooting manual exposure, that means you can find that exact frame rate that makes your wall look great. You know, that's going to vary wall by wall. Like the Creation LED wall, you know, over here, right? I, it just took a little bit of finessing. Right now it looks like I've got a little bit of band across the center when it's on a really dark image. Um, but I know from my experience, and because I had it set a few minutes ago, that if I adjust my shutter rate up and down in my ISO and my uh, f-stop as well, I will be able to get rid of that. And I have, and I, I did it in my review for that. Um, here with the DVS Optic 2 wall, you know, it didn't take as much finesse, actually, to get the frame rate with my cameras to match up really good. DVS also does a killer job making their, their panels, their LED walls, work great with, uh, with cameras, and so it's not all that difficult to get them synced up, okay? But the key is, you know, whether lasers, LED walls, that you're finding a frame rate where it looks really great. Lock it in, right? Lock in that frame rate, and then adjust your exposure with things like the aperture and ISO to be able to get it exposed correctly. And that's also where the brightness of the LED wall really comes into play. If I start cranking this LED wall up, um, it will be more noticeable, the Moyar will be, whether, as opposed to where I have it really good and balanced right now. At the end of the day, it doesn't have to be a mystery to get your LED wall looking great on camera. It doesn't. In fact, it really is as simple as sitting down, spending some time, and this doesn't happen instantly, especially if you're new to this, but get into your camera settings, start working with them, and find what can work best, okay? Oftentimes, uh, your lasers or LED walls may have the ability to adjust inside of them the actual rates and, and frame rates and whatnot that they're using. Um, if you're having trouble in the default settings, you can start diving into that it will probably help you. But spending some time getting those settings right, putting everything to manual, so white balance, exposure, everything focus, um, is going to be the ticket to making all this stuff look great together so that your stage can look awesome. So, if you like that and you're like, hey, I want an LED wall that looks great, that looks really amazing on my stage, how do I do that? Well, just head over to Learn Stage Lighting Gear, check out our packages, check out our LED wall calculator, and reach out to us. We love to help you find the perfect fit, and we've got so many products from so many manufacturers that we can go, hey, this one is an awesome fit for you. It's gonna work well for your space, and it's also gonna fit your budget. So head over to LearnStageLightingGear.com, and our no-brainer gear thing of the day is our gaff tape. We've got it, we've got colors, we've got brown, we've got two inch, we've got three inch. If what you're looking for is not on the site, just reach out. Um, we would love to serve you with your gaff tape needs and save you money so you can buy more lights or pizza. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in our next video. Thanks.